Hello, what's going on, and welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. How are you lot doing? You alright? Sweet. Well, I hope you're doing well, and welcome to a Chelsea news video today, where we're going to be talking about a few Chelsea-related things, shock, horror, and maybe, maybe I'll voice a little bit of frustration due to the stagnation in the transfer window slash market regarding Chelsea Football Club. Mm. Some positives to talk about as well though, regarding uh, Conor Gallagher of Charlton Athletic coming back to maybe go out again to a more positive loan in the Premier League. Mm. And also the Euros 2020 is coming, but you know what might not be coming? Harry Kane's broken hamstring. Where does that leave Tammy Abraham? And the big meaty French forehead of Olivier Giroud does look like his exit is imminent well, while in my English again, while they finalise negotiations with Inter Milan. Au revoir, sweet prince. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alright, but before we dig into the content, please do subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new and you have not done so. Subscribe, bell notifications icon, why not like the video? Alright, let's talk about football and more notably Chelsea related topics. Alright. Okay, so Harry Kane has got a bad hamstring injury and has had surgery which is bad. And even though he was quite in poor form in the World Cup in the latter stages last summer, he still finished the competition with the golden boot. He's very, very important to England and it is bad that he is injured. Although, this does pose an opportunity for young Tammy Abraham, who you'd think would probably be next in line to carry on in the centre forward position behind Harry Kane. Sure, young Marcus Rashford is in scintillating form, even though he's scoring a lot of penalties as well, but I think Gareth Southgate will recognise that Rashford is playing really, really well from that wide position drifting in and it would probably be a waste on Marcus Rashford's ability and indeed a waste of the centre forward position to play him down the middle. One thing we know about Tammy Abraham this season is he is the out and out conventional centre forward. He can run in behind, he can hold the ball up, he can combine, he can assist, he can occupy centre backs. Gareth Southgate should recognise that and think, hmm, you know what, maybe Tammy Abraham should should lead the line for England in the Euros 2020, if indeed Harry Kane is out. Interestingly enough, if this does happen as well, or if Kane is out, I think Danny Ings should get a call up to be the second striker behind Tammy Abraham. Obviously, in an ideal world, if you're not a Chelsea fan, you'd probably be hoping Jamie Vardy would come out of retirement and just score loads of goals and cause havoc in that England side running in behind. But I think he's pretty much, you know, said I'm not going to do that. Ruled that out. I just wanted to say ruled that out. Why the hell could, again, my brain, failure. Jamie Vardy has ruled that out. So, is this the moment young Tammy Abraham leads the Free Lions into glory? Scoring goals, combining with Jadon Sancho one side, Sterling the other side, rotated with Callum hudson Doy and Marcus Rashford. Just epic scenes. Ross Barkley in behind. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly less exciting. Actually, that's unfair. Ross Barkley's really good for England. On the right flank, guess who's going to be coming up on the overlap doing crosses, eh? I, I mean, it will be Trent Alexander-Arnold. But maybe in the rotational games, who knows? It could be Reese James. I mean, I don't know. It could be. Exciting scenes. Tammy Abraham has been interviewed about this, asked about leading the line for England. He says, look, I, I look up to Harry Kane. He's sort of one of my striker idols, which he is, and that's nice. But he says, if, if the call comes, I'm ready, I can do this. But quite positively as well, he said he's you know focusing on Chelsea first and foremost, being the best number nine he can be for Chelsea, which is nice. Right, moving on. Conor Gallagher down in the championship playing for Charlton Athletic. Started in scintillating form, generally a very, very good player. But the club are doing very poorly. And it has been reported that he will be recalled in January. Not to play in the Chelsea side, because let's be honest, he's not needed at the moment, especially after Ross Barkley had a really good game in that midfield. It was nice to see, wasn't it? But apparently clubs like Norwich want him. I know, from a side struggling to stay in the league to go to a side struggling to play in the league. Regardless, it's a step up, a league step up, and it will be good to see him cope with top division top level football and see if he can have a positive effect on a team that really is struggling with relegation and when I say struggling I kind of mean condemned to relegation but it's another good example of how loads of clubs are sniffing around Chelsea players because Chelsea are developing really really good players and the model works they go out on loan to the championship maybe even the Premier League and then come back to the first team but like I said Chelsea don't really need him in the first team right now 
one player that I feel like is a big shame that hasn't been playing in the side and looks like he's kind of been wasting his time a little bit is Ethan Ampadu. Still stops for Wales, yeah, it doesn't really get a sniff out in Germany at Leipzig at the moment. And Frank Lampard did comment on him early doors when he first got behind the desk this season. He said, look, I really, really like him. I wanted to work with him, but I thought maybe I guess it's a good thing for him to go out on loan. But that's looking pretty silly now, isn't it? Especially when you think certain games in the Cups, he definitely could have started. And if he performed well in those games, then he could have been on the bench for, you know, other games, Premier League games or whatever. Just, so, just he could have been in and around the first team, you know. Obviously, early doors this season, Frank Lampard gave Billy Gilmore a couple of runouts, which was great. And he performed well, but those are the kind of games Ampadu probably would have played in. Bearing in mind, Ampadu already has a wealth of first team experience at Chelsea ever since he was 17 years old. And I think he made his debut for Exeter at 15 or something. So he's been in and around men's first in football for a long time. Unlike Billy Gilmore, but who is obviously very, very talented, I'm just saying it would have been nice to have Ampadu knocking about. Maybe he could have actually helped out more than we think. Meh. All right, let's get back to transfers. Let's talk about Olivier Giroud. His exit is imminent. The negotiations between Chelsea Football Club and Inter Milan are going pretty well, considering <laughs> the, the lawsuit is just finished where Antonio Conte squeezed more money out of Chelsea. It's kind of funny how they're just so happily doing business together, but it does look like it suits everyone. Chelsea will actually make a few million out of Giroud, probably more than they would selling him elsewhere. So I guess everybody wins, really. Giroud's agreed a contract, the club won him, Chelsea are okay for him to go. It's just literally a matter of, I think, hundreds of thousands, which is literally nothing in this day and age. So expect him to go in the next couple of days. So where does that leave Chelsea in the centre-forward position? Not in a great space. Especially when you consider how poor Batshuayi has been of late when he's come on. We all know what he brings. We all know that he's happy being the second striker, whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing for a mentality and an attitude for a striker at a club that wants to be knocking on the door or apparently just doesn't want to be knocking on the door. But we know Frank Lampard is willing to try new different things and they had been training with Christian Pulisic through the middle. I know he's out for a few weeks, but that does look like an option. And, you know, with Mason Mount being a left wing option as well, Chelsea have plenty of attacking options to play on the flanks and that would be interesting to see Pulisic down the middle a little bit more. We know he can make late runs into the box and scramble in the six yard box to finish. So maybe Frank Lampard's like, strike a Pulisic, let's go. Who knows? Speaking of outgoings, Pedro looked nailed on to be leaving, but now things have changed a little bit. A lot of things have changed, actually. I think Chelsea are probably looking at the squad, looking at the deals that they've proposed, probably thinking, you know what, man, we're going to get ripped off if we do business now. Maybe we just don't do any business. A third of the transfer window is gone, and although Chelsea have signed a promising young striker, one for the future, they haven't looked to strengthen their first team squad or the starting 11. I know it's very, very difficult in January, but I think Lampard's always maintained that if we can strengthen, we will. But maybe they can't. Maybe the feasibility is out of their hands and the prices they're getting quoted for certain players is just absolutely ridiculous. You know, Chelsea's centre-back's looking better, Christensen's come into the team, he's looking good. Maybe the defence isn't as bad as they thought. Sure, left-back's a problem, but it's not that big a problem when Azpilicueta plays there. It does look like Reese James has nailed down the right-back spot now. So maybe he thinks, you know, all right, well, we can get by like this. A nice 3-0 win at home where we should have scored more last time out. Maybe we just cruise to the summer and then spend big then. <laughs> Don't know. It doesn't make for too much of an exciting window for Chelsea, even if it makes sense. Still, if Chelsea finish in the top four and put in a good performance against Bayern Munich um, and obviously progress past Hull in the cup, then that's really all you can ask for Frank Lampard from this season. A few more goals from Tammy Abraham, a couple more from hudson Adoy. Reese James emerges even greater. You take the full season to assess your centre-backs and find, is that really a weak link as centre-back? And come the summer, you look at the genuine options at left-back for purchasing. Everything's good, I guess. I mean, right? And then obviously Chelsea, Pedro does go, Chelsea get another winger, maybe a striker and just do decent summer business with all the money they've earned from hopefully yet again securing Champions League football. They'll have loads in the pocket saved up by that point. We'll have to see, but obviously check by football therapy every day and I'll keep you updated with the Chelsea news stories regarding world well, transfers and everything else. But I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on the stuff I've spoken about today. So make sure you do get down into the comment section below and express your thoughts and opinions. I'll be down there checking it out. 
If you enjoyed the content today, please do like the video. And why not support my other channel, Yan's Yard, where I play video games, talk on the sofa, more of an informal vlogging style, chilled channel. The link is in the top of the description, so make sure you do go and subscribe to that. Why not follow me on social media, Instagram and Twitter, at Football Yannick. Um, that's it guys, so you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.